What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and in this video we are going to be continuing our 2D Endless Runner tutorial. Now in the last video we just set up the player um, character with a rigid body and a graphics that has a box collider on it and also the ground with a ground layer as well. Now this is all fine and good but we need to make the player move. So in this video we are going to be getting the player to move by allowing him to jump up and down. Now we're going to be implementing a uh, a, a feature to our jump where you if you hold the uh, jump button down for longer it will allow you to jump higher um, obviously if you just tap it you'll just jump at a smaller height we're also going to be adding in a crouch feature and obviously check if the player is touching the ground before we allow him to jump again so let's actually get into that um, now if you guys want this source code for this lesson or the previous lesson you can actually get that on my patreon the link is down below you'll also be able to get the assets as well and everything else you need for this series um, so without further ado let's just let's create a player movement script um, and this is going to be our and this is basically just going to allow us to do well we're just going to open this c sharp project and there you go now we've got our player movement open i'm just going to remove all this starting stuff and create a fresh new script now inside this script we want to get a reference to our player's rigid body so we can apply forces to it so we're just going to serialize the field call it a private rigid body 2d and i'm just going to call it rb um we're then going to go into we're also going to create another serialized private float this time, which is going to actually be our jump force. We're going to set this to a default of something like 10. We'll probably need to play around with this in the inspector to get it to jump right. Now, we need a private boolean, which is just going to say is grounded. Um, which is just going to allow us to check if our player is grounded. We're always going to we're going to set it by default to be false because you know you want to make the check before you actually tell anyone if you are touching the ground or not. And then also above this, just going to create another private layer mask, and this one is going to be called our ground layer. Um, now we're not going to set this anything default. We'll be able to set this in the inspector. We're then going to get a, a private uh, transform as well, which is just going to be our feet position. This just lets us. This just allows us to send out a raycast our feet to check if we're touching the ground. So while we are in the role of this, let's go to our update method. And in our update method, we just want to check if we are grounded. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get a physics 2D dot overlap circle. And we just want to check our feet position dot position if there is a radius now we can set this in the inspector it can be something super small let's just go here set a private flow and this is just going to be let's say our um ground distance and we'll set it to something really small 0 0.3 0 0.2 something like that let's set it to 0 0.25 something small um, and that's going to be our ground distance. We then want the layer mask, which is what we're going to be checking against, which is just going to be our ground distance. Oh, sorry, our ground layer, not distance. We already used our ground layer. And now this will re either return true or false, depending on whether we're touching the ground or not. So inside of our update method, under our grounded function, we just want to say if is grounded and our input dot get button down is equal to our jump key, then we are just going to say is well we're going to create a boolean first, sorry, a private boolean called is jumping equal to true or sorry equal to false to start with but we are going to sell it down here equal to true we then want to actually set our velocity to a vector 2 dot up times our jump force this is just going to give us the initial jump power so how high we're going to jump we then want to make two more flareables here. So the first one is going to be a jump time. I've set it as a flow and just set to 0 0.3. We then want a private flow, which is actually going to be our jump timer. Down here, we just want to say if is jumping and we're still holding down the jump key. So we're going to say if get button jump. We can then do a check if 
if our jump timer is less than our jump time and if it is less than our jump time we're going to set rb dot velocity equal to another factor two dot up times our jump force this will basically keep applying our jump force to our player while we're holding down the key so we need to actually make this decrease or increase in time so we want to say jump timer is plus equal to time dot delta time so as you're holding the key down if the jump timer is less than our jump time we are going to continue upping this time until it's no longer that and that will stop us applying any jump force and then we just want to set else if is jumping is equal to false that means we're no longer jumping we're actually falling at this point um, and we also want one more thing which is going to be if we let go of the key so we will say if input dot get button up and again we're going to look for the jump key and if we get the button and we release it we're going to say is jumping equal to false now this will stop us from being able to continue jumping in the air we also want to set the jump timer back to zero um, when we release the jump as well now this should allow our player to jump really nicely in the air so let's go back to unity and just set the inspector variables so we want to set our ground layer equal to ground our feet position we're actually going to go into our player create a new empty object call it our feet and let's give this a little gizmo um whatever we want little make a little blue one and then let's just move this down to 0 0.5 there because i think that will put it dead at the bottom of our feet here we can then go back to our player and drop in the feet position and the rest of this can really be left we just need to add in our rigid body as well so let's just test this out by hitting play and seeing if we can actually jump now if i hit space bar you can see i can jump if i just tap it you can see i do a little jump if i hold it you can see i jump a lot higher now we can tweak these values if we want to in the inspector um, to make it uh, different or jump slightly different. So let's set our jump force to something like eight, but let's set our jump time to 0 0.5. This way, what we're saying is we jump smaller on the initial jump. However, the longer we hold it, uh, we can actually jump even higher. So let's hit play and see what this does. So you can see if I hold it, you could do jump. And if I let, if I just tap, I do this tiny little jump. And if I hold it, I could do quite a large jump. And you can see we fall down pretty quick. Now you can tweak that as well. So inside of our gravity scale, we can set our something to like 10. Now this means our jump is not going to be anywhere near as high. So you can see here, if I hold it, we go like that, but we fall down really quick. So you can see a little jump and there you go. Now, to make that a little bit more balanced, what we could do is bring our jump force back up and probably set our timer jump down, jump timer down to 0 0.4. Now, you can tweak all these settings, mess around with it, and see what works for your game. Um, I'm going to go with something like this. There you go. So, my settings are now uh, jump. We're going to have gravity scale of 10 to allow us to fall really quickly to make it more responsive when we're playing our game. We're going to have a jump force of 15. Um, uh, a ground is in 0.25 this doesn't really matter it's just for when you hit the ground and then we're also going to have a jump time of 0.3 i think these make a really nice flowing game it allows us to jump near to the top of the screen as well so we can actually have all this play space as you can see here we jump quite high we'll be able to avoid obstacles we can do a little jump we just need to jump over something small and quickly there's a lot of different things we can do there the next thing we want to do is actually set up the key for our crouch so what we're going to do is go to edit project settings and input manager now over here we want to go down to we're going to go down to fire free here and i'm going to change this to be called crouch because this is already set to the left shift key which i want it to be our um I want the left or the left shift key to be our crouch button so we can set that here so our jump key is currently set to space and the crouch key is now also set to uh, left shift which is great 
So we can close down our input manager and let's actually go back to our player script here. Now inside of here, we actually want to get enough a reference. So at the top here, I'm just going to say serialize field a private and it's actually going to be a transform and we're going to call this our graphics because this is the thing that's going to allow us to um, scale down. Now inside of update, let's just uh, put this functionality in a just use region tag so we can actually collapse this down under there then we're going to create another region which we're just going to call crouching now inside of this region we want to check if we are grounded because we don't want to be our crouch in the air so we want to say if we're grounded and we hit the input dot get button down actually for this we can actually just say get button and what we want to search for is the crouch key we set up so in here we just want to set our graphics dot local scale equal to a new vector free which we can just set as graphics dot local scale dot x and then we want to set our we don't want to set this to half the crouch size so we can set up a variable for this up here let's create a serialized private float called crouch height and set this to 0 0.5 then we want to also just set our graphics our local scale dot set here then when we release this button so we're going to say if input dot get button up and we're going to say crouch we can also put this as down because then this will only be called once and if we are crouching if we get our crouch button up we can actually do the same thing but set the scale back to 1f now you may want to set a variable to get the initial scale if you plan on changing the scale from 1f however i don't plan on changing that so this should work fine let's go back to unity and see if we can now crouch we will need to apply our graphics to our player movement then so now if we hit play and we hit shift you can see our player crouches so we can jump and we can't crouch in the air but when we hit the floor we can actually crouch down now we need to do one more check in here because if we are currently jumping and if we are crouching and we hit the jump key as well then it will also um, still be crouched so what we need to do is make sure we are not jumping so you want to say if is jumping and we're still hold and we're still crouching so we're just gonna say if input dot get button and we're just going to check if we're holding the crouch button while we're jumping then we are going to do the same here and unscale our uh, crouch so back inside of unity let's see if this works if i'm crouching and i jump you can see my character now jumps up now we can actually combine this and make this a little more intuitive by actually taking this if statement removing the down playing it in here removing the crouch because we will already be holding that and moving this inside so now this will basically say if we are jumping and holding the crouch button then we will stand up however once we hit the ground again if we're still holding the crouch button we will crouch again immediately without having to repress the key so you can see if we jump and we hit the ground again without me having to repress the key you can actually see that it is going back into crouch by default which is great and that is all of the movement we're doing today in this video guys so i hope you have enjoyed enjoyed this video has taught you a lot about the jumping mechanic in our game and obviously what we're going to be doing in the next video we're actually going to be adding in the obstacle spawner which will spawn obstacles that will try to take us out and destroy our player so that's going to be fun don't forget to keep an eye out for that and i will see you in the next video so don't forget to like subscribe and comment and if you want these assets or the source code for this tutorial or this lesson it will be in the description down below you can become a patreon member to get access to it all thank you guys and see you in the next one peace out